It's like, it's like older than you. Okay, so we're going to go through and solve this for x, but we're going to try to find out if it has exactly one answer, if it has many answers, or no solution at all. Let's make our first step combining like terms. On the left side of the equation, I see an x here which has an invisible what in front of it? Y. Y. And a negative 6x. So that's going to be 4 minus 5x because it's positive 1 and negative 6. On the right side of the equation, I have a positive 6 and a negative 2. So we're going to get 4 minus... 5x. What are you noticing right now? They're exactly the same already. Let's continue and see if we can solve for x though. What if I add 5x to both sides? I'm going to get 4 is equal to 4, which is true. That means that there's many solutions. Yep. Ooh, that was, that, I was gonna get and that. really, as soon as I saw this, I could have stopped there. It's always best, though, to try to solve for the x just to make sure you didn't make some mistake earlier. <laughs> Basically, what this is saying is that I could put pretty much any number in for x into this equation, and it would still work. Yep. Because... If 4 minus 5x is equal to 4 minus 5x, if I put a 2 in there, it would also be a 2 over here, and it would do the exact same thing. In Khan Academy, they refer to this as the infinite solutions. Right? So then you can't put it really in a math form because then it wouldn't have a solution because there's infinite solutions. There's infinite solutions. Let's try this problem. Negative 8x plus 6 plus 9x is equal to negative 17 plus x. Before I can try to solve for the x, I need to simplify. I have like terms over here. A negative 8x and a positive 9x is going to simplify to just, right, just 1x. So we're going to say 6 plus x. And then I have negative 17 plus x. They don't look the same. But what has me concerned is that there's only an x here and only an x here, and they're both positive. So if I simplify for this, I'm going to end up with 6 equals negative 17. Is that a true statement? No. So there's no solutions. Here's the way I think about it. If it's many solutions, it's true. Like you're going to get something that equals the same thing on the other side. Like I said, we saw it up here. We verified it when we simplified it down to this. If there's no solutions, it's false or not true. What if it's one solution? It's one solution and you get x equals 7 or whatever the Six. answer is. Not These seven. are the ones that we normally get, where we come up with exactly one thing that the x equals. This is what you guys have been solving for me for the last couple of weeks since we've been working with equations. We've come up with a variable equals a number, right? I kind of think of these as the normal <coughs> ones or the ones we encounter the most often. And then there's some rare cases where anything can be true for it or nothing will work because when we simplify, we end up with something that just isn't true. This is false. Six does not equal negative 17. Okay, who wants to do a couple more? Okay, let's do a couple more. Write down 4x plus 7 minus x equals 10 plus 3x. What's my like terms? 4x and negative x. And that's going to simplify to 3x plus 7 equals 10 plus 3x.
I've already heard somebody say they think this is going to be a no solution. Why? Yeah, these terms are the same, and these terms are not the same. So it's not equal to each other. But let's just verify. Let's get rid of this 3x. If we do it to one side, we have to do it to the other. And we end up with 7, which is not true. So no solutions. And then, last example. Oh my gosh, the book is using the variable C. I will. I don't like using weird variables. 2x plus 7 plus x equals negative 14 plus 3x plus 21. Like terms here is going to be 2x and x giving me 3x plus 7. Like terms over here, I've got negative 14, positive 21. What's 21 minus 14? What do you notice about those terms? They're the same. Let's simplify further, and we get this down to be 7 equals 7. There's another way of putting this answer. The foldable we're using today calls it many. Khan Academy called it infinite. If you're checking in your book, they say all real <coughs> numbers. So instead of giving you book problems, we're going to go back to this. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight problems on here. We just did four together, so this is completely doable to finish in this class period, even with our tech issue that slowed us down a little. I would first write these down on a piece of paper and <coughs> find out. Some of them are going to equal variable equals a number, and those you would glue underneath one solution. If you end up with a number equals the same number, those would go in the many, or the infinite, or the all real numbers, right? Yes. And then this is if you end up with a number that it says it's equal to another number, which is not true. Yes. So you're going to take these eight, solve them, and put them in the right place. The markers, for? The markers are if you wanted to make this a little bit more colorful, because it's boring, because I only have white paper. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. You can do this work in your notebook if you want to, like on some blank back pages of previous, or you can get scratch paper. Okay. Yep. See the word variable.